Let's take another look at a question about the refinancing of short-term debt. So in this question, as at December 31st, Fit Forever Corporation owes $500,000 on a note payable due February 15th. Assume that Fit Forever follows I for us and that the financial statements are completed and released on February 20th. If Fit Forever Corp refinances the obligation by issuing a long-term note on February 14th and using the proceeds to pay off the note, how much of the 500,000 should be recorded as a current liability as of December 31st? And if they pay off the note February 15th and then they borrow a million dollars on March 1st, how much of the 500,000 should be reported as a current liability? And then the second part of this question is how our answers would be different if Fit Forever followed IFRS. So let's start by making a timeline here so that we can get a sense of what's going on. So here's our timeline. So we've got December 31st is the financial statement date. Uh, financial statement date. Okay. Then we've got that they, the statements are completed and released on February 20th. Financial statement issuance. Okay, and then here they're going to refinance the obligation by issuing a long term note on February 14th and by paying the using the proceeds to pay off the note on February 15th. So essentially, February 14th, 15th, they're going to issue a long term note. Long term note. Okay, and the first transaction and then the second option is that they're going to pay off the note on February 15th. So the second option, which maybe we should do in a different color so we can keep it straight. The second option is that they pay off the note, pay off the note on February 15th. And then they borrow. One million on March first. So those are two different options that we have here. So the question is: under IFRS, how much of the note should it be short term, and how much of it should be long term? Well, we know that here we had a five hundred thousand dollars short term because. The note, it, he, they owe it 500,000 and they owe it February 15th, which is less than one year. So we know that it would be classified as short term. And IFRS is very simple. It says, listen, this is all we are interested in. If there was an agreement at that date to refinance the loan into some sort of a long-term obligation, then we'll take it into account. Otherwise, nothing's dated December 31st, it doesn't count. So IFRS would say that this is a short-term obligation we would have our 500,000. And in this, and in the second option where they pay off the note and then they borrow, it's the exact same thing. Same thing. So A and B are exactly the same. IFRS is very simple. What about ASPE? ASPE gives a little bit more wiggle room. So they say, well, the date that ASPE is concerned about is the date of, let's change our color here so we can get this going. What ASPE is concerned about is this date, the date of the financial statement issuance. So this is their cutoff. And so they say, okay, well, if you had $500,000 short term and then you entered into a long-term agreement to settle the note on February 15th, well, that was before the date of the financial statements. So ASPE would say short term is going to be zero and the long term is going to be 500,000. And the reason that ASPE is okay with having it as long term is because this is a long term note. So the $500,000 wasn't settled from current assets. And so because it's not going to use current assets to settle that obligation, they say it's okay to, to report it as a long term, a long term um, liability. What about in the next scenario where Fit Forever pays off the note on February 15th, this option here, and then later they borrow money here? Well, this is an interesting one for ASPE. So in this situation, ASPE is actually going to reclassify the entire amount to short term. And their long term is going to be zero. And why? Because even though there was a transaction afterwards to pay off the debt, 
remember the debt still has to be on the balance sheet. So no matter which way you look at it, we have to have a short-term debt or a long-term debt of 500,000. We can't not have the debt on the balance sheet because the debt did exist at December 31st. So the only thing we're discussing here is the classification. And here, this actually paying off the debt meant that we would have had to use cash because we didn't create any sort of a financing, a long-term a long-term financing uh, vehicle to settle that debt. So if we settled it from cash, then it should be shown as short-term because it was settled out of current assets. And if we borrowed the money on March 1st under some sort of a, whichever type of arrangement this is, it's past the state of the financial statement issuance. So it's past that cutoff. So if the, if the short-term obligation of the 500,000, if it was settled by restructuring it into a long-term note payable prior to the date of financial statement issuance, ASPE would say, okay, that, that debt did not require the settlement from current assets, therefore it can be shown as long-term. And in the second scenario, where the company simply paid off the debt before the financial statements were issued, that payment would have had to come from current assets, likely from cash. So therefore that debt would be shown as short-term. 